The only contemporaneous account of Theodora's life is Procopius's The Secret History, um, which is not only uh, extreme and completely loathes every aspect of Theodora, but I think we can work out we can't really trust him when he also talks about Justinian walking through the palace with his head underneath his arm. Um, but he is the only contemporary account, and this came out much later as well. It was found, found later. So even then it's not trustworthy. It does have a lot of the attitudes, though, that I think we all recognise um, about women in power. Uh, in many ways, Theodora has been, in history at least, described as a very Machiavellian, Mrs Macbeth kind of character. And she possibly is. Certainly to get to that kind of power, um, any woman, even now, has to really struggle to get to um, extreme power, which is what she ended up having. Justinian uh, called her my pious consort, which is an amazing phrase for the time, and even an amazing phrase for now. We wouldn't get um, Obama calling Michelle his consort and giving her the kind of power that Theodora had in Justinian's court. Um, but it does suggest that she did work very powerfully in, certainly in Theodora Actress Empress Hoare, I've tried to look at the reasons in her life that she might have had that. As a theatre star, she would have learned to work with audiences. As someone in charge of her own career, at least eventually, she would have learned to direct that. And then she went off and she had a religious conversion. Now, in writing a narrative, you don't normally send your character out of the main city, off for a few years to a desert, but in order to try and get this right, I um, kind of bent the rules of, of narrative structure, uh, as much as I could at least, to deal with this, because she is a saint in the Orthodox Church, and it's very much against the stories that Procopius and other people based on him wrote about her. Um, they thought her only a whore, they thought her only lascivious, they thought her, you know, all kinds of damned. But this is a woman who, when she became um, powerful, uh, invented the first halfway houses for ex-prostitutes who, of course, couldn't get married and had no way of working once they were beyond able to work on the street. She wrote a paper on pimps and prostitutes, and frankly, some of our modern commentators, someone like Julie Bindle, would be delighted to write that now. Um, and she brought in the first laws that gave women back their dowries um, when they'd been summarily divorced. I think a lot of this is to do with the fact that the Christian church hadn't yet really clamped down on women. The church was still very much defining itself and women did still have a strong place. Also, she was in Constantinople and Constantinople absolutely revered Helen, who was the mother of Constantine. So there was a place for strong women. And Theodora's childhood, her youth, and the stage up until she was empress, which is what I cover in this first of the two books, is very much about how she became the woman that we now have a very little history about, but a lot of imaginings about. Certainly, um, people have written about her very brutally, very nastily. And I did kind of want to reclaim that, not just as a feminist, but also as a novelist. Um, if someone is going to be brutal in power, you want to find out how they got there and certainly the story of how she got there is what excites me.